Hang out, we've got some fractions, just a couple of them. And there was like 12 or 13 people, I think, that said that they did not know how to uh, solve these square root fractions. But it's quite simple. We're only going to have perfect squares in our fractions. And the first thing we want to do, instead of thinking, this, thinking of this as a fraction inside of a square root, we should think of it as a fraction of two square roots. That way we can look at just the top and solve that, just the bottom and solve that. Again, these are all going to be perfect squares. What is the square root of 36? Six. What about the square root of 100? Ten. Now my directions here, just like they'll say on the test, say to simplify the following square roots completely. What's the key word there in that direction? Completely. completely. Is 6 out of 10, or 6 over 10, is that completely simplified? No. no. So we've got to simplify it further. What two numbers multiply to give me 6? 2 and 3. <laughs> what two numbers multiply to give me 10? 2 and 5. OK, guys, can we put the Chromebook away, please? Thank you. Now, is there any factors on the top and bottom that are the same? A pair of twos. We're going to cross those out. I'm left with a 3 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. So 3 on the top, 5 on the bottom. Slap a plus or minus sign in front, and there's our answer. Completely simplified answer is plus or minus 3 over 5. All right? Does that kind of make sense? OK. Give B a try. Square root of 81 over 36. Give that a try on your own. See if you can uh, come, up, come up with our simplified fraction there. Solve the square roots first, then whatever numbers you get. Simplify that fraction. Some of you are already going ahead. That's fine. So go ahead and try, sorry, go ahead and try B. Okay. Good. 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 Let's see. Yes, that was great. And then go ahead, Ben. more moments to finish that up. A lot of us got it. Good. Nice. Don't forget the plus or minus. Good. C and D look great. Well, let's give it a few more. <coughs> taking it one, one focus group at a time. So someone help me out. What's the square root of 81 equal to? Whoa. Whoa nine. Oh, wait, you're, you're a step ahead. I, we'll get to the three. But yeah, square root of 81 is nine. What's the square root of 36? Six. Six. OK, we could break this up. Three times three over two times three. What can I cancel out here? A pair of threes goes away. I'm left with a single three on the top, a single two on the bottom. Is that my answer? Plus or minus. Plus or minus three over two is what we get. Not too bad, right? Like I said, you're only going to get perfect squares in these fractions, so it'll always come out nice and even. I mean, it's a fraction, but there's no square root in our answer for that. Now, C and D. Another area which surprisingly had a lot of people saying that they needed help on it. If I were to cover up that minus sign and just have the square root of 25, what would that be equal to? 5. It would be plus or minus 5. Good. 
But because we have that minus sign in front, we swap our plus or minus out for just a minus. That's all it is. It's a perfect square with just a minus sign instead of a plus or minus sign. Right? If you're, if you're going ahead and getting through this by yourself, that's great. Um, just make sure we're not being distracting to those around us because this is the pace we're going at. Give D a try. Again, perfect square. If you're still a little bit iffy on your perfect squares, I would suggest uh, taking out your notebooks and looking at note sheet number two. It looks like that. Okay, it's going to be your best friend on the test in terms of double checking your answers and work. Okay. Now, E and F are a little bit different, so just give D a try. So my, my number in the square root is 169. If I'm looking at my square root sheet, right, see that, take a look. Where's 169? Right here. The square root of 169 is plus or minus 13. So the negative square root of 169 is just going to be what? Negative 13. If it's a negative square root, then I have a negative answer. Just like over here. Negative root 25, we cancel out the plus or minus and just have a minus. All right. Now, E and F. Let's take a look at E. So far, so uh, we've only dealt with perfect squares. Is 24 a perfect square? No. No. 24 is what we call an imperfect square, which means we're going to still have a root or a square root sign in our answer. When we have an imperfect square, our natural instinct to, should be to create a factor tree. So what two numbers multiply to give me 24, Leilani? We can do 12 and 2. What two numbers multiply to give me 12? 6 and 2, sure. What two numbers multiply to give me 6? 3 and 2. So that's the first step. we got to do a factor tree. We're going to have to do this later, too. I'm going to circle up all my prime factors, 3, 2, 2, and 2. And I'm going to rewrite 24 as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. All we did was take 24 apart. We didn't change anything about what's inside the square root. We just broke it up, broke it down, whatever you want to say. Now what I'm looking for is pairs. Is there a pair in here I can circle up? A pair of twos. Should I circle up this third two? No, I'm just going to leave it there. It doesn't have a pair. It's got to stay behind. My pair of twos goes out in front. All right. I still have a square root in my answer because it is not perfect. And I have two remaining numbers, two and three. What do I do with that two and that three? 
Do I add them together? Multiply them. Giving me what? Six. There we go. I was just about to ask, what are we missing? Plus or minus two root six. So we make a factor tree. We rewrite our prime factors in the square root. Group up our pairs and bring them out in front. Whatever numbers don't have a pair get multiplied back together underneath the square root. Follow that same process in F and give that a try. You will have a lot more factors, but we're looking for pairs, right? Give F a try. That's fine, but I'm not helping you with stuff that you're ahead of me on. Yes. Ooh, okay. So see how that six got broken up into the three times two? We don't want to circle like this. Right. So only the endpoints of all of our tree branches, all the endpoints of the So it's two, 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 two three, five. Oh, see what I mean? So just throw that underneath the square root, too. Okay. Uh, when Jordan comes back. All right, 120. What two numbers multiply to give me that? 2 and 12. You can do 10 and 12. You can do 60 and 2. You can do 30 and 4. You can do 40 and 3. It does not matter. How can I split up 10? Uh, 5 times 2. 5 times 2. What about 12? 
Six times two. What about six? Three times two. Three times two. So I've got a five, a two, a three, a two, and that other two. We cannot forget about that one. Hold on. Go when Bree comes back. You're welcome. So in my square root, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Is there any pairs in there? Two. Yep, pair of 2s. Don't circle up all three of them. we got to leave this lonesome 2 behind. Along with my 3 and my 5. This pair of 2s goes out in front with a plus or minus sign in front of it. I've still got my root. What is two times three times five? Well, two times three is six. What's six times five? 30. There's our answer. And like I was telling Essence, it looks weird to have 30 under the square root because it's such a big number and you know that you know it's not a prime number, but two times three times five is its breakdown. There's no pairs to take out so it's one of those weird cases um, where we have a number like that underneath the square root. Does that make sense? Yeah. Quick show of thumbs. How are we feeling about that? Okay. Good. As all over the, the test, because in the Pythagorean theorem, you're doing the same kind of thing with imperfect squares. So this is one of those base uh, level knowledge things we got to know. Let's take a look at number two. Another section where a lot of us had some trouble with uh, on the study guide. So we're identifying whether the following numbers are rational or irrational. Now, if you remember the Ed puzzle we did, there's a lot of information in that. It was kind of confusing. So here's like the shortened version of what you need to know. Everything is a rational number except, except imperfect squares. And write this in there so you have it imperfect squares so what we just solved you know the square root of 120 that would be irrational because it is an imperfect square and ugly decimals we talked about ugly decimals a little bit when we went through this the first time around those are the really uh, those are really the only two things you have to look out for. Imperfect squares and ugly decimals. Those are the only irrational numbers that we're going to see. So if I look at 2a, I have the square root of 64. A question like that is trying to trick you by throwing a square root in there. But what is the square root of 64 equal to? Just 8. Well, 8 is definitely a rational number. Right? Evelina, go ahead. So if I have the negative root of 144, is that going to be rational or irrational? Rational. Why? Because it's just equal to negative 12. Of course that's rational. Negative 12 is just a number. It's an integer. It's a rational number, and it's a real number. So all we have to worry about is rational and irrational. Now look at number C. What do you think of uh, the number in C? It's a decimal. An ugly one. That is right. Here's how we can tell it's ugly. Aside from just looking at it and recognizing that this is an ugly number. You can ask yourself, okay, 0.5628719, what are the next three numbers after 9? We don't know. We can't predict what's going to come after. Because all of these decimal numbers just are seemingly random. This is an irrational number. What does that dot 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 tell us at the end too? It keeps going forever. In this pattern, which is no pattern at all.
corner. What about three over four? Rational. Rational, of course. That is not an imperfect square. It is not an ugly decimal. Right? Three over four, that's 0 0.75. That's not an ugly decimal. That's a pretty decimal because it ends at a certain point. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> what about e square root of 60 why do you say e rational is 60 a perfect square no so if we took the square root of 60 we're not going to get a nice answer like we did in a and b this is irrational as well Last but not least, for F, give me a thumbs up for rational, thumbs down for irrational. What do we think for F? Give me one sec. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I see some thumbs down. I see some thumbs up. If your thumb is up, that's great. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute. I thought that ugly decimals are irrational. This is not an ugly decimal. This is a beautiful decimal. Look at all those threes. What do you think the next three numbers are going to be? Three, three, three. If we can predict what comes after the dot, 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 that's a beautiful thing. That is not an ugly decimal at all. The ugly decimals are the unpredictable decimals. Right? If we want to talk about technicalities, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. 3.33333 is just three and one third. 3 over 4, that's a fraction. Obviously, we can write that as a fraction. But this, 4.5628719 blah, blah, blah forever, we can't justify that with a fraction. There's no pattern. There's nothing repeating. That is an ugly decimal. That's an irrational number. So that, those are the two things you have to look out for. Imperfect squares, like in E, and ugly decimals, like in C. Did you have a question? I, I thought that would be. I, I thought. I thought. That, I, I thought it becomes rational when when you divide something in the square root. But I guess I was. Yeah, I mean, kind of like if you, if you have a square root like a and b, and you can you know divide it out and get a number. Yeah, that's rational. But majority of numbers are rational. It's the the very rare cases where we get an actually irrational number. Imperfect squares, like in E. Ugly decimals with no repeating patterns, like in C. That's all we have to know. All right. Questions I can answer on that? I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory, hopefully. All right, down to three. This, surprisingly, had a lot of people confused yesterday. Find the missing, what's happening? Find the missing side lengths for these triangles. Now we don't see the triangle, but we get the letters. A is 5, B is 12, C is what we have to find. So we just plug them in. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What am I going to plug in for A? Well, what's A equal to? 5. What's B equal to? 12. And C is what we do not know. Right? If I'm setting up B, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, what am I going to plug in for A? Three. Three. I don't know what B is. I'm going to leave it as B. And what do I plug in for C? So now that we set those two up, give them a solve, see what you get, and then see if you can set up and solve 3C on your own as well. Take a couple minutes for that. <coughs> Even though there's no triangle shown, it's just the Pythagorean theorem.
what we've been working on all this time. Good. See what happens. Good. Um, yes, only thing, take off the X bones. It's just C. You want to root both sides. Nice. So C squared is 169. Then we got a square root the left, square root the right. Same thing over here. Square root the left, square root the right. That'll give us B. So use a little, your little chart here too if you need to. Okay. Good. So we're going to see. Good. Does that say 114? Or 144. So what's 144 plus 25? You can't get smaller. You see that in the back? 139 is close. There we go. Does that number sound familiar? Take the square root of 169. Where's 160? That's right. That's equal to 13. So C equals 13. Good. So we get 15. We take the root, then we got a 5, a 5, and a 2. We have to bring something out, we got to leave something behind. Yes, so this one is good. We got 13, right? So, okay, so box up 13. Now, with this one, because my 9 is on the other side, we don't want to add them together. I want to subtract the 9 over to the other side. Yeah. What'd you get? This one's good. This one. Because the 9 is on the opposite side, we can't just add them across the two. We've got to subtract 9 from both sides. You see what I mean? Give it a try. You got it. There you go. Good job, Ben. Break this down. 3A. 
5 squared, what does that give me? 25. What about 12 squared? Okay, add those together, what do I get? 169 is just like our warm up. What do I do now? Square root both sides, leaving me with C equals what? 13. 13. Perfect square, 169 gives me 13 as my missing side length there. Now over here, I saw this mistake like three or four times as I was walking around. Three squared gives me nine, five squared gives me 25. The reason why I want you guys to split your equal sign is so that we know my nine is on the left, my 25 is on the right. If I wanna join these two numbers together, I have to go across that equal sign, which means I can't just add them together, I have to do the opposite, which is subtract. Okay, my nines cancel out. What's 25 minus nine? 16. Take the square root of both sides, and my b is equal to what? Four, that's right. So my missing side length on b is four. Now we don't get as lucky with c. What's my equation gonna look like when I plug everything in? That's right. One squared plus seven squared equals C squared. What's one squared? One. Just one, good. Make sure you don't do two there. 49. Add them together, what do we get? 50. Now, is 50 a perfect square? No, it's very close to 49, but it's not 49. So I have to do a factor tree, just like we did in 1E and 1F. Same exact thing. 5 and 10. How can I split up 10? 5 and 2. I've got a 5, a 5, and a 2. 5 times 5 times 2. Is there any pairs I can bring out here? Yes, my 5's come out in front. What gets left in the square root? The 2. So my hypotenuse on that triangle, C, is equal to 5 root 2. It's not a super clean answer, but it's as clean as we can get. Any questions I can answer on those, Pythagorean theorem problems? We'll come back to them with graphs on the back. Let's take a look at 4. These are those word problems that I had you guys come up and solve for the class, if you remember, a couple days ago. Was that a couple days ago? Was that last week? That was last week, yeah. Oh, yeah, today's only Tuesday. So a square box right away, I see that word. Square. And I know I'm in for a treat. I'm going to draw a little square box here. And this square box is 10 inches tall. That's the only number I get. Do I know how wide this square box is? How wide is it? 10 inches. Because a square has all the same size sides. Right? What we want to find is the diagonal length from corner to corner of this square. What letter can we give that diagonal length? C. Here's my right angle pointing right at my hypotenuse. So when we set this up, we get 10 squared plus 10 squared equals C squared. Here's my A and my B, right, my legs. What would 10 squared give me? 100. Add them up, what do I get? 200. We got 200 equals C squared. What do I wanna do now? 
Break it up by square rooting both sides. What two numbers multiply to give me 200? If you do 10 and 20, sure. 10 is 2 times 5. 20 is 4 times 5. And 4 is 2 times 2. There's a bunch of different ways you could break that up. But you'll end up with those five terms no matter how you break it up. 2 times 2 times 2 times I did circle the 4. You're right. I didn't want to do that. Good catch. I would have messed that up. 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Any pairs there? Pair of 2s. Pair of 5s. What's left over? A 2. So my 2 and my 5 are out in front. My solo 2 gets left behind. Multiply those together to give me 10 root 2. 10 root 2 what? Inches. Inches. Our units are right there in the problem, so just reread it to figure out what goes after your answer. You have to include units, specific units, I should say, when we're doing a word problem like this. All right? So on the back, number five is very similar. You're going to get a lot larger of a number. But give it a try. See if you remember the shortcut that we talked about with our factor trees with a square. But follow the same process on number five and see what you get. Up and you're missing units. Two 
40. So the 40's in front. What gets left in the square root? A single two. And what are my units? Yeah, good job. What are my units on the head? There we go. Good. Now we got to do a factor tree for 3,200. Well, we know that it's 1,600 times 2, right? We know that 1,640 times 40. So just work backwards. You know what I mean? So, good. If we wrote units, what are the units in this problem? That would be 40 times 2. This is 40 times 40. What would 4 times 40? Throw another zero on it. 1,600. Yes. Close. It's a big number. All right. Let's go through this one. We're all, looks like we're all there for the most part. All right. Take a look. Take a look. Even if you're done. I got a square TV that's 40 inches. Boom. Right there. I know my answer is going to be in inches. Square is 40 inches tall. That means it's 40 inches wide. I can set this up. 40 squared plus 40 squared equals C squared. 40 times 40. Okay. Well, I know 4 times 4 is 16. And if I have a 40 times a 40, that's two zeros. I'm going to throw those on the end. 1,600 is what we get plus 1,600. Don't forget we do it twice. Add those together and what do we get? 3,200. Now I take the square root of both sides and I've got to break this down. Now let's go over the shortcut we talked about. Some of us remembered it. Some of us broke this down all the way, which is totally fine for you to do, but it does increase your chance of making a mistake. Here's the easy route if we're dealing with a square. 3,200. Let's look one step above. Well, 3,200 is 1,600 times 2. Right? 1,600 plus 1,600 gave us that number. So it's 1,600 times 2. 1,600, like we just saw, was 40 times 40. That's how we got 1,600. Now, I could take 40 and do 4 times 10, and 2 times 2, and 2 times 5, but that's a lot of work. I'm going to get a lot of factors that I don't want. I'm going to stop right here because, look, I've got a pair of 40s, a single 2, 40 times 40 times 2. Nope, 40. Bring the 40s out. 2s left behind. Inches on the end. So yeah, if you stop at 20, that's fine. And then you have another pair of twos that you bring out. And then you multiply two times 20. You see what I mean by that? You still get 40. And some of you broke it down all the way, which is fine. 40, like I said, 4 times 10, 2 times 5, 2 times 2, 4 times 10, 2 times 2, 2 times 5. But that's a lot more terms to deal with, Ben. Let me see. Yeah, so the breakdown is good. Three pairs of twos and a five. Oh, you added the three pairs of twos. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times five is four. Yeah, super close though. If you did that on the test, I'd only take like one point off. All right. Questions I can answer on the squares. You are going to have a square problem on that, right? Okay. This is where I think it was 25 or 26 people said they struggled uh, on the, the study guide yesterday. And that was in like all three classes. So maybe I didn't teach this lesson very well. That's probably my bad. Or it's because it looks a little different than the way we learned it. I've got a triangle here. The one thing I'm missing on this triangle is what? 
Legs, numbers. I don't have any numbers. I want to find my hypotenuse. There's my hypotenuse across from the right angle, as it always is. But I don't know how long my legs are. Well, that's the beauty of this being on a graph, is we can just count exactly how many units each leg of this triangle is. All we have to do is count. So if I take my left leg right here and I count, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. If I look at my top leg, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six units. Oops. So we're not given the numbers, but we can just count on the graph and find what those numbers are. Then I just plug them in and solve away. 8 squared is 64. 6 squared is 36. What do I get when I add those two together? 100. Is that my C? 100? No. What do I have to do last? Square root the left square root the right. What's my C equal to here? 10 units. So unlike the square problems, we don't have a specific unit like inches. But we are still talking about a distance. We're on a graph. So we want to make sure we include units. All right. B and C might not be nice whole number perfect square answers. But all we got to do is count the legs, plug them in, and do the Pythagorean theorem. So give B and C a try. We'll come together in a few minutes and talk about it. Try B and C on your own. actual distances or lengths, exact things that can't be negative, distance, length, all that good stuff. Good, so we get 45. What do we do with the 45? That's right. So we've got to do, exactly, break it down, see what happens. Beautiful, great job. It's perfect. Count the boxes. What'd you get? Good. Perfect. Both of them. Good. We just need units. Again. See, when you go too fast, you forget things that are important. Right? slope the direction. That's perfect. Great job. I'm glad it's one of the things. What's up? 
Yeah. So direction does not matter. It's the same formula every time. It's all right. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 6 squared plus 3 squared. There you go. Plus, good. What is 36 plus 9? Good. Is 45 a perfect square? What might that mean? No. We got to do a little factor trade. Break down 45. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's more to it. So. Good. No, distance can't be negative. Right? That'd be like me saying these walls are negative 10 feet high. Wouldn't make sense. It would. True. But that, that's still a positive length just in an opposite direction. But I agree both. Is it correct? It's correct. Oh, that's on the next. This is not bad. Wait, wait. Good. Looks great. Yeah, Nick. What'd you get, Jillian? Nice. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, sorry, I should say the base of A and A people. The height is A. Yeah. We'll get to that one in just a second. All right, let's wrap these graphs up so we can talk about the ladders. Uh, if I'm looking at B, how long are my legs in B? Six and three. Six and three. Six squared plus three squared equals C squared. Good. What is 36 plus 9? 45. Okay. We got to square root it. 45. What two numbers multiply to give me 45? 5 times 9. You can do 15 times 3. Does not matter. 9 is 3 times 3. So I've got a pair of 3s. A 5 left over. C is equal to 3 root 5 units. What are my legs in C? 5 and 5. Give me 25 plus 25. Which gives me 50. Again, not quite a perfect square. 5 times 10. 10 is 5 times 2. Pair of 5s, 2 left over. Right? And the only reason I'm going fast is because we all have the same answers for the most part. And that's what we end up with on C. All right, let's talk about these ladders before we get out of here. There's a typo in number seven. It should say the base of an eight-foot tall shed, but whenever we're doing a ladder problem, our picture is going to be the same. We've got a building or a shed, whatever you want to call it. We've got a ladder leaning against it, and we've got space between the two. All right? The important thing with this diagram is not how perfect your ladder looks. What matters is that we see a nice, clear, big old right triangle right in between them. That's what's important. Okay. I see it a couple drawings. Uh, no, I'm not going to make fun of your drawings, but you know what your drawings look like. Okay. They don't have to be perfect. But I need to see a big old triangle here because that's what we're working with. All right? We also have to be careful of what information we're being provided because it can change. The base of an eight foot tall shed. Okay, my shed is eight feet tall. Has a ladder leaning against the side of it. 
All right. The base of the ladder is six feet away from the base of the shed. Here's the base of the shed. Here's the base of the ladder. This distance is six. The question is how tall is the ladder in feet? What letter can we give that ladder? A, B, or C? C. C. Gives me eight squared plus six squared equals C squared. And we can solve that out and get our length. All right? In number eight, we have the same exact diagram, same exact drawing. But we're given different information. The base of a 10 foot tall shed, okay, now my shed got larger, it's 10 feet tall, has a ladder leaning against it. The ladder is 20 feet long. So in that, now I know that my C is 20. We gotta figure out how far away is the base of the shed from the base of the ladder. Talking about bases, I'll call it B. So now we have 10 squared plus B squared equals 20 squared. So here we're missing the hypotenuse, but in number eight we're missing the leg. Again, that changes the way we solve this problem because when we're missing the hypotenuse, we add our legs together. When we're missing the leg, we have to subtract our leg from our hypotenuse. I know we're almost out of here, but take a moment to finish those two up, solve them out, see what you get for C in number seven and B in number eight. Yeah. What's up? Good, that one's great. This one? Okay. So, 20 squared, we have 300. 300 is 30 times 10. 30 is, oh, 30 is 15 times 2. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Good. Good. I assume it's good. Good start. 400 minus 1. Good, good. So, super close for this one. We'll take the square root of 100. We'll take the square root of 100. Yeah, take the second one. Which one are you going to pick? Good. 10 what? 10 ladders? Ten units, we can be more specific than units, here's the question. What units are we using? Feet. Ten feet. For that one, yes, we get 300, we take the square root, we gotta break it down as much as we can. Because I don't want to go from us if you want. Yes. Yes, 100 is just 10 times 10. So both those tens come out. And C is just equal to 10. It's very square. You can break it down, but you get everything coming out of it. Now, in the, in the last problem, we can't bring everything out here, so we can't bring something out. Yes, we got to do 20 squared first. What is 20 times 20? There we go. 400 minus 1. There is dark trooper. We forgot three. So we bring out a two and we bring out a five and we multiply them because three is left up.
thing. So that 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 leftover one is a yes, very close. Good. Okay. Yeah. So this is good. We got a five, a three, a two, a two, and a five. A pair of fives, a pair of twos, right? So we know in the square root is just going to be a three. The three is my left over. So that's in the square root. If we bring out a two and a five and multiply them, what's in front? Ten. So it's ten root three. Michelle got it wrong? What did you get, Michelle? Let me see real quick. Oh, you got ten root? You forgot that five. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Ten root three. Yes. All we're missing is the unit. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that one? Did you get that one? Oh, good. So now we do a factor tree for 300. That's weird.